Okay, hello. How are you? Could do the big camera, I guess. I won't do the big camera. <laughs> this will be a kind of channel update video. I'll go into one of these uh, sort of virtual machines that I got going on here just for a background. But I got some topics that'll go over here because it's been a while since I did anything. So got to get used to talking again. <laughs> but uh, just sort of a channel update for, you know, the latter half of what, 2022 now, the end of November, I think it is. And I haven't really done videos or anything for, I don't know, four months, maybe more by this point. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think, ready to get back into it. So I'll just go over some stuff here. Some stuff here, if you didn't notice, this is in 4K. If you can read the text, maybe it's really tiny on a smaller screen. I don't know. I've been trying to get better at that. So I might read better if I increase it a little bit. I'm going to 4K. If files don't take up like 5,000 hundred gigabytes for the, like an hour of footage or something. We'll see. Hopefully the quality is better. Apparently if you do at least 2K or 1440p on YouTube, they should give you better like compression rates and rendering on videos apparently. So 4K maybe more so, I'm not sure. Had to mess with uh, NVENC a little bit in OBS as far as settings because they changed stuff up like the week, well last week or two weeks ago when I updated stuff. Um, they changed the the recorder here for H.264. They have different presets. I'm just doing P1 because like P3 and above used way too much GPU percentage for not really a noticeable decrease in file size or increase in quality. So these are my settings, not that it matters. I was on CQP16 before and it took me a while to figure out what I'm actually supposed to do with that stuff. But I got OBS set, set up again. Um, I looked at this page ultimately, some preset migration guide. So I'm not going to get too deep technical on this. I'm just, uh, I was like, okay, I was using some CQP value of like 16 before. And down here they say, okay, 2160p, some lossless quality. You should do P2 or P3. I have it on the P1 preset. But this page is pretty good. So I might might link this in the description for this. But anyway, that was like the first thing here. If 4K is better, I'm going to do 4K just for higher quality, I guess. Uh, one thing I did work on is chip 8. So I have sort of six or so videos there between one hour to an hour and a half-ish each on the Chip8 emulator and C and SDL2. That'll be in its own playlist. I can probably release that soon because those are all done and, and ready to go. That's something I was working on the last month or so uh, out of the three or four that I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, if you have any ideas for future emulators, I think I asked for that at the end of the videos anyway, but on this one, that's fine too. So if you want to see like some Atari or NES or Game Boy or something, leaning towards like a Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, but maybe NES, maybe something else. Could play games or homebrew games or something on there, or even just the CPU emulator for like RISC V Z80. Some I want to do like a simpler fixed instruction with thing. I think RISC V is variable, but the instructions will still be a certain fixed length, not x86, where it can be like five bytes for this instruction, like 15 for this, and all this other crap trying to make an assembler for it. It's very painful, but. You know, if you have suggestions on emulators or things that you want to see, I can I can program those. That's fine. Now, another reason it's taken me a long time is audio. So it's been about a month or two. Hopefully it sounds a little better than previous videos. Maybe a little less muffled, a little clearer, given my voice as it is. Uh, but audio took me at least, uh, you know, four to five weeks of slowly trial and erroring things and getting things work out. worked out, so... As far as this, I transferred my setup. I am on like a different Windows, as you can see, although I have Explorer Patcher and things for, for stuff to look a little bit better. And to my eyes, I like moving the taskbar on vertical, you know, on the left, for example. But I eventually settled on these things. And, you know, I have like equalizer bands working and all. So my room is very bad and boxy in this range. <laughs> so I had to reduce that and, you know, some other things here. I've um, got Transient, this de-esser is very good, TDR Nova, very good de -esser, which I like better than making other multiband EQs and stuff, but that's audio stuff that I still don't fully understand, but I understand more so now. So Re Reaper Plugs is very nice. That's one reason I'm not fully on Linux, by the way, is because uh, I couldn't get audio set up on Linux <laughs> very well. And uh, yeah, there's like an easy effects thing, which was kind of like a bunch of effects combined, but it, it like just would freeze randomly and stuff was bad, either on Ubuntu or Mint or Fedora. I might have tried one or two other things, but that's the reason I'm still on Windows, other than for work and some games and things. 
NVIDIA drivers were hit or miss depending on your distro and other stuff. I uh, eventually settled on Alpine, so I have the standard kernel and the virtual machine build for Alpine Linux, and it's very, very fast. So I was testing my OS stuff because I want to get back to that, and I did some changes, got it running under GCC and other things. So that might be the next video if I do an OS dev stuff, if I do more of those videos again, which I think I'll get back to, but I was just messing around with it. Um, so it does build under GCC, and I'm on Alpine because it's very fast. So if I don't do, like, you know, any optimizations here, it goes, like, instantly, and it runs. APK is very fast, so I just get a lot faster iteration there, even though you probably can't read the text because it's 4K and all, but... So that's good. Tired, not used to doing this. But yeah, I set it on Alpine Linux. I like it. It's pretty nice. So I do recommend that if you need something small that's not just the Docker container. It can technically be used for desktop or workstation setups. And uh, I like it for that right now. I'm going to go forward with that. thought about Gen 2, but I didn't, I didn't want to be compiling and emerging the world for five weeks. So, <laughs> uh, But use flags are pretty nice. But okay, I think that loosely goes over these things. So I am planning on assembly. I've had people ask me to do either tutorial or some other games and stuff, like I did the boot sector games. I'm planning on doing more of those as well. I'm trying out to see if I can get some Asteroids thing to work or like a tiny assembly game in a boot sector. Although I'm not sure how I'm going to fit in um, like translation matrices or uh, <laughs> like rotating about a point. I'm still not sure how to put that in for game logic for like turning the ship and making sure the shots go in the right directions and asteroids moving and everything. You need a tiny bit of like trig for that, but I'm not sure yet how to fit that in. And I was kind of learning the, uh, the x87 floating point commands and stuff for that the other day. So I might get back to that. Or I can try Tetris or uh, Centipede was a recommendation a long time ago, some other things. But assembly in general, uh, if you want to see something specific, let me know. I'm not really sure about like intro to assembly or tutorials. There is like a book that I think is called Programming from the Book. <laughs> Programming from the Ground Up by like Jonathan Bartlett. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is a good book. I recommend if you're new to Assembly, x86. It's a very good book. I don't know about uh, like ARM or RISC-5, but this book's pretty good. And there's probably other ones like, you know, that covers things better. Assembly language step-by-step -step I've seen recommended as well. So this one may be a good choice if you just, if you want a book or can find a PDF on, well, Zlib's down now, isn't it? On, on Library Genesis or something. Um, other than that, I'm not really too sure, but if you have anything specific you want to see, I, I've thought about maybe like uh, in Linux making like a sort of libc sort of subset just in assembly, like for reading, writing the files all in assembly from scratch and, you know, string manipulation and things like that. Like a, maybe like for an advent of code or something for this year or future year, because I did try that in 64-bit assembly before for x86. And it went all right up until like day 14 or so when I stopped, but <laughs> I could do something like that and make like a, an assembly utilities repo or library or something. So I've been thinking about that. Uh, but if you want to see anything specific, let me know, because I'm not sure where to take like intro or tutorial or something. Like, do I want to go into vector instructions or SIMD? Because I don't know those <laughs> too much. Or do I want to keep it like really basic or what, what would you want to see, right? I can maybe write like a fourth or some small language within assembly and then self-host it. That might be a fun exercise or project. So still thinking things through there. Um, as I kind of stated earlier, I'm still doing OS dev. <laughs> I got it building on GCC and stuff. So I do want to finish up the file system and get the open, close, read, write, seek, syscalls and the F open and F close and etc. stuff built on top of that for standard IO. Have an open file table and inode table in the kernel implement directories and commands for making and removing directories and all that. Um, I was trying to think of how to do like device drivers as well, maybe like some form of the Unix virtual file system, which I think is like structs with function pointers that you can switch out dynamically at runtime for like loading a driver. You know, this struct is for a, a disk driver and it has a read function, which is some generic function pointer that is filled in later to actually read from like a SATA disk, maybe an AHCI kind of thing. I don't know. Or something would be different for USB. Something would be different for floppy, you know, just for storage drivers. So I'm not sure where to take that. I might need to read like the Minix book and stuff some more. But um, 
that's an option. So I'm still looking into OS dev. Uh, if I can get the file system done eventually within the next, like, I don't know when I started it, three years ago. So within the next three years, maybe. Then I want to move on to sound support because I did 8-bit sort of PWM pulse width modulation with the PC speaker a while back as a test, and it ended up all right on my old laptop, the old ThinkPad. So I was thinking about getting back to that because that's fun. And then that could introduce like sound drivers for a PC speaker versus, versus PWM, PC speaker versus like Sound Blaster or something. I don't know. I do want to get some sort of processes, multi-processes, multi-threading. So SMT, simultaneous multi-thread, right? Or multi-processor. So in implementing like um, two CPUs, because I know my old laptop has a Core 2 Duo, right? So that'd be two CPUs. They could each run one thread or two threads. So maybe both SMT and SMP. That would be fun. At that point, I'm not sure what else I would need to do as far as kernel stuff and not user land specific. So I may try to split off and do... Um, an EFI bootloader, 64-bit, from scratch. So you don't need, you know, GNU EFI.h. It's just header files. You can write that yourself if you want. So I could show that. And doing, like, device discovery and stuff. Uh, probably all in C still. Full freestanding without even the standard live. We could write all that again. That's fine. You can also do it in an assembler, like flat assembler. It has include files and stuff for building... Uh, you know, portable executables for Windows, and as such, it can build EFI headers and things. So I could do that in assembly as well. Depends if people want to see that. 64-bit other than that needs a bunch of changes for, like, the kernel land, not the EFI bootloader. Uh, kernel land would be, you know, 64-bit GDT, 64-bit IDT, 64-bit paging, which would need, for long mode, needs, uh, I think, five-level paging, or at least level four. So we'd need to expand some things and change some things around, but I could split off things like the project structure, change it to like Arch for 32 and 64-bit, for example, which would lead better structure later for like ARM or PowerPC or some things that I probably won't do, but <laughs> I'd like to think I might. So that could be stuff later. I would like to get to the point I could develop programs and update the OS within itself at runtime without a reboot, maybe like copying to a backup and overriding that backup at runtime or something. I would like to get to that point for 32 and 64 bit, and then I don't know past that. It would probably be user programs like a, a simple browser or something. I don't know. I got ideas. I got a big to do list, but those were like the next steps I'm thinking for the medium term for OS dev. But I still do want to do that. I just don't want to do that only because I kind of burnt myself out on research and I'm not the smartest person, so it takes me a long time to understand. Uh, and then try to implement and then test and then get a video where I do that and have it work halfway decently. Okay, so that sort of leads into time commitments, right? A little bit. So why does it take me forever to do things? I, because it takes me forever to do things. So I do have more than enough time, but currently, yeah, I don't really put in all the work. I don't have the best work ethic as far as sustained, like, consistent scheduling and everything. I do want to get better at that. I'm looking into different ways of, like, time blocking and, uh, you know, setting up task lists and getting them done, marking them off physically on paper helps, you know, stuff like that. Maybe the, the Pomodoro thing might work. I'm not sure. Generally, I'm just really just too tired after work. I don't like thinking for eight hours and then having to think for another like four hours and try to make sense. And, you know, I can recharge and get my energy back, but then it's like 10 p.m. and I have to sleep. <laughs> Generally during the weekday or on the weekend, I just want to relax and not do anything for like two days. But so that's just me saying I'm lazy, and that's why I'm not. That's why I have long breaks between videos, because I do that for several weeks at a time, and that turns into months, and it's like, oh, I need to do something. It's been four months. So hence, you know, this video, right? Uh, but okay, I, I do want to get better quality. I want these to be shorter, even though I tend to ramble anyway. I want these to be shorter, better, better uh, signal-to-noise ratio. And especially if I want to do 4K, the file sizes are going to be large, so it would pay to have better density of information in a smaller time frame, right? I just, I want things to be better. I generally do, like I put here, generally it's been two to three times I have to re-record everything just to get it better, and then I have to edit that down for however many hours, right, to cut out and sort of rearrange things sometimes. That's how you get the final video that, if it's an hour, it probably spent like 
five to 10 hours at least making the damn thing, but that's all right. Uh, that's kind of normal for, for video production. Um, streaming might be different because that's generally just a, a set and forget thing. You do it once and, you know, that's kind of live and you get reactions and stuff, but that's not really heavily edited if it streams. Um, I do want to be better. I was, I was hoping I could get and schedule my life a little bit better. So far, that's not quite happened, but I just need to get better discipline and hopefully this can fall into place more. So I'll probably start by just like time blocking and dedicating some time every single day to, to things I want to do, whether it be exercise or like reading books or studying actual CS or math or something or foreign languages, uh, playing music on guitar or saxophone or you know, making videos and programming. As long as I do something consistently every day, I think it won't really matter how much time I put into it. It should fall into place. And if not, then I can increase the time commitments, um, you know, past a certain point if they're too short. So if I, if I commit 20 minutes a day and that's not enough, I can increase that time, right? But if I don't commit any time every day, then it doesn't really matter. So I'm hoping to get that start and then hopefully this will fall into place more. But I'm not sure. I'm still learning these things which I shouldn't be because I've <laughs> been an adult for a while now, but still got to learn some things. Streaming I'm looking into since it's been a long time since I've done that, and I kind of thought that would be fun. Talk to people and get better at talking and explaining things, and I don't know, put my hat in the ring of, of streams, I guess. Just it'll be live and some way to blow off semen, and relax or rant about work or something, <laughs> or just play games or something with people, I don't know. I'm not sure about Twitch or YouTube these days since Twitch adds all their crappy ads and everything, and even though YouTube has their uh, equivalents. I was thinking programming and or gaming, so I might do both. I might do like one programming stream two to four hours a week, and then one like gaming stream two to four hours on the weekend is what I was thinking. I'm not sure on certain days and times yet, but it'd probably be somewhere in the afternoon to evening, right? If it's during the week, it'd have to be after work, so probably like seven to nine or something. Uh, on the weekend, it could be however long. <laughs> I just have to take breaks to like eat and, you know, get the rest of my life in order, but yeah, maybe like uh, just play random games I like that are old on GameCube or something, maybe study research work on projects for OS dev or something, I don't know, <laughs> program whatever. I was thinking maybe like a roguelike, kind of like a NetHack or a Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup or uh, maybe not Dwarf Fortress, that's a bit too complex, but some simple roguelike and my work system is an AS400, right? Well, been updated, the IBM I. Originally, essentially, it's still the AS400 and there's uh, a public one online, a public host that's, uh, I think, from Germany, pub400.com, so you can connect and write programs, including, like, green screen applications and things on that. So I was thinking, okay, maybe I can do, like, a text roguelike on that, so sort of making an RPG within the language RPG, so I thought that was going to be, like, a fun play on words for naming some, some joke in there, like RPG squared. So I was considering that, or I can do, like, regular RPG and SQL programming, if people want to see that, on, like, a... <laughs> A green screen thing that shouldn't be used past the 80s, but is still in commonplace running society in the background, right? So if that sounds interesting, I can do that. And if I didn't make it sound too boring uh, or other generic, you know, SQL programming or things for, for IBM stuff there. Or I can do games. I was considering Metal Arms since I found some guy did like a texture replacement from the OG Xbox version. So the textures are high on the GameCube version and I like that game as a kid, so I might do that. Cause that seemed pretty fun or other like GameCube PS one era games. I really like. So anywhere from like the late nineties to mid two thousands is kind of stuff that I like probably just due to misguided nostalgia at this point, but yeah, or even NES. Some of those can be fun. I generally like strategy or puzzle games or racing games, some shooters and stuff, RPGs. So it'd be, it'd be pretty chill. I'd be, I like things to be pretty chill for gaming. So yeah, it'd be kind of laid back. <laughs> if I did streams for that. Uh, but I'm still considering these things. So again, let me know your, your thoughts on any of these if you have any. That's fine. I'll take them into consideration. I do take people's suggestions and I do write them down, even if it seems like I don't get to them. They are on a list somewhere. <laughs> it's just a matter of getting to those eventually, right? So other than that, if you have thoughts on things in general that you'd like to see, I can I welcome those thoughts, right? I, I had half a mind to do random stuff in random languages just to learn things or mess around like COBOL or Forth or Scheme or OCaml or J into like different paradigms, right? Uh, maybe even Piet or Idris or Agda or Haskell or something, you know, just random stuff, Python, 
for a, a practical choice. Even Java, <laughs> modern Java is not too bad, just is a bit of boilerplate, but that's okay. Every language has their boilerplate. If you don't know RPG, it's similar to C or C++. I, I like to call it C++, and you could see that if you get into it, but that's different. I just put that there because that's what I do for work, so I have the most experience in that if somebody wanted to see how things could be done. But I could do uh, <laughs> I could do Ad Venom code in RPG. Maybe that would be something for this year, right? That might be interesting. But yeah, any language project really, ideally smaller things are one-offs, maybe like one, two, three hour to two hour long videos, because generally past that, I take forever doing them, right? <laughs> you know that. If you've known this channel for any period of time, I take long breaks and can't do things. Yeah, series can go on forever. I'm bad with that. Although, yeah, software by nature is never truly done. There's always refactors down the line or redoing it, rewriting it, however you want to say that. Yeah, with FPGs, FPGAs, which I wanted to look into, so sort of you're making hardware into software in some way, which I thought was really interesting. I've been looking into those sometimes in my spare time. They look very interesting. Just simulation, like a logic sim or something as well. Emulating hardware and software seems really interesting like the NAND to Tetris stuff or NANDgame.com, you know, that kind of stuff's cool too. Or even there's, there's games on Steam I could get into for videos or for, uh, for streaming, like, you know, the Zactronics games, TIS 100 and, and stuff. But even like uh, some other ones that I put on, on wish list, like MHRD or some other like programming games might be, might be interesting. I don't know. This is sort of rambling as it goes on, and I haven't talked to a, a camera in a long time, so I probably seem a little nervous, and that's all right. Might as well say that out loud. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are my loose topics. As far as immediate things coming up, I'll probably release the Chip 8 videos in their playlist. I did not do Super Chip, but I could go into Super Chip or other extensions if people want to see that. But I'll release those soon and probably do at least one or two more to get back into uh, OS Dev. At least the next video for OS Dev might just be fixing some compiler errors and getting you know GCC to compile and work all right. So, so that it works on Clang and GCC. And I also wanted to look into making like the releases on GitHub because I know they have that on there. So maybe I can release like the binary and say, write this to your USB, maybe it'll do something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that'd be for that. And then it would be after getting GCC to work at the least, you know, doing the file system and stuff. So that, that would be the direct next steps for, for this channel. But in general, I just wanted to give an update on where things are at. What I've been thinking about, because it's been at least a quarter since I uh, last did anything, right? So I've had people ask me, you know, I'm still okay. I just, sometimes I don't do anything for a while. Uh, but yeah, trying to recharge. I was burnt out a bit for a while from working all actual burnout. And I thought I got through it and I didn't get through it. Uh, but now I'm, I'm pretty decent. I'm trying to get my life more in order regarding, you know, sleep and uh <laughs> and health and exercise and things so as these things become uh, small habits and become regular habits that i don't have to think about and then i'm healthier in general then i can work on making habits for time on a sort of daily or weekly basis and then i'm hoping the rest of this falls into place and you know i can i can do more stuff and and have fun doing it because there's not really a point in doing it if you don't have fun right so yeah, I guess that's where I'm at. That's sort of, I've said my piece many times over. So yeah, uh, appreciate people watching. I do, especially this, uh, this rambly video here. So I'm going to call it here, which is pretty good under half an hour. That's very short for my usual fare. So yeah, um, hope you're doing well wherever you are. I have stuff coming through in the pipeline and I'll try to get to it. I guess, yeah, I got, I got a new PC and everything set up too, along with, you know, Windows and all that. So I'll put a picture in here somewhere. Not that it matters, but yeah, hope you're doing well. And I'll get rid of this infinite recursive void and uh, see you on the next one. So, you know, cheers. Thank you.